I'm glad that you could join me on Song with Nancy. Our topic for this video centers around denim and chambray. Both are comfort clothes. They blend with other colors and styles and have become acceptable for nearly any occasion. Mary Malari, my most frequent guest on Sewing with Nancy and author of the book Denim and Chambray with Style, has inspirational and creative ways to add style to casual Fridays. Welcome again to Sewing with Nancy, Mary. Nancy, it's great to be back. I think we have some exciting projects to share this time. The first accent is a twist on seminal patchwork. A variation in fabric strip widths creates an exciting movement. We'll show how to set aside the rules and try a new version of patchwork, this time with denim. Discover the joy of adding style to denim and chambray next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's how-to sewing program with Nancy Zeman is being brought to you by Pfaff, the largest European producer of sewing machines. Pfaff's creative line of sewing machines and hobby lock sergers are simply the best. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears for home, classroom, and industry. Ginger scissors and shears are the choice of professionals. Oxmoor House, the publisher of innovative sewing, quilting, and craft books, including books by Nancy Zeman. Madeira Thread from Germany, with superior quality and smart packaging to make it a sensational value, preferred by home and professional embroiderers everywhere. And Nancy's Notions Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and unique, hard-to-find sewing notions and supplies. Let's take a close-up look of Mary's shirt so that you can see how we can work at Seminole Patchwork. Nancy, I call this wavy edge seminal. All of the pieces are of very different sizes because of the way we cut the fabrics. And we start by determining where we'll put the seminal and making a pattern. And obviously on this shirt, you placed it or it covered the yoke. And so you're going to make a pattern of that yoke. I have some tissue here. And I'm going to mark where I want my yoke to be. And so I'll use this uh, marker and make lines uh, to, that I can follow to make a pattern. So you're just following along the seam line of the existing shirt. That's right. And then with my pattern, I'm going to make a window in another piece of tissue. And my window is actually going to be larger than the pattern by about half inch on each side of the uh, pattern edge. On all sides? Yes. So we've made that window a half of an inch larger all the way around. You've chosen five cotton fabrics, interesting color combinations. Uh, prints and you noticed or you mentioned this was a wavy edge technique and when Mary cut these she just simply cut them gracefully with different curves. I didn't want all of the edges to be the same so I cut each piece a little differently. So five fabrics are then placed on a stabilizer and this is to give it some stabilizing for sh stitching. Uh, they all line up uh, and we want to make sure that all of the edges cover uh, the, the previous one. So they're overlapped. Yes, that's right. Now we didn't mention that we should cut these strips longer and wider than the actual window opening. That's right. Uh, after measuring my pattern pieces, I generally add several inches, like eight inches to the length and two inches to the width so that I'm going to create a bigger piece of seminal mm -hmm. than what I'll need. The first row stitching is done with clear thread, with nylon thread and you've zigzagged along this raw edge, one of the overlaps. I'm securing the fabrics together with this first stitching. And then the follow-up is another row of stitching, this time over a piece of decorative cord or ribbon or, or yarn, as we have here. Here you can see a close-up of how easy it is to simply zigzag over that cord to add that little extra touch of embellishment. Now, after you've zigzagged and then added yarn over all the seams, over all the raw edges, then you can do some more cutting, cutting these into strips. And I'll clear my board and do some cross cutting in the opposite direction of the way that we initially cut. This time, Nancy, when we cut strips, we can cut them of, we cut them straight, but we can cut them of any width that we wish. We can make wide ones mm -hmm. or narrow ones and, and vary them for a little more added interest to this project. So I had a one and a half, now I have a one wouldn't go much l narrower than a one. No, no, that's a, that's a good idea. And uh, what we're going to do after we've cut the whole assortment of strips is to rearrange them in order so we can sew them back together again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second one we flip and... The fourth? Each, yes, that's right. And so we've made a new arrangement and you can see how the there is movement mm -hmm. in this. 
you would sew these back together again with narrow fourth of an inch seam allowances meeting right sides. Just assume that they've been sewn at this point. Right. And then we're going to place our window over our piece to make to determine how we're going to cut our pattern piece for the yoke for our shirt. Then simply turn under the half inch seam allowances and place it over the yoke. We already have it done in this instance. And then with a the narrow zigzag and clear thread, do the stitching. It's almost invisible here as we attach the seminal patchwork. Now, Mary, you have developed many ways of working with seminal patchwork, and another alternative is to use denim and uh, various colors of denim. Right, I like to break the rules, Nancy. So we're going to use some strips of denim, and I'm going to display them here with the wrong sides up. Mm -hmm. I like to use darks and lights, and, and even different uh, thicknesses of denim work well. But instead of doing it the normal way where we uh, overlap edges, we're going to just butt the edges of our pieces together, and then we're going to place strips of fusible interfacing knit over each of these and carefully press them down. On this small sample, we have the strips on the wrong side that have been pressed to temporarily hold them together. You could see the red stitching because Mary did zigzag stitching with clear thread on the top, red on the bobbin, just so that you could see. Then again, we're going to do the cross hatching, cutting apart the strips various widths, flipping the every other strip, and then again using the fusible interfacing, sewing it together, and then doing another row of zigzagging so that you have another option of seminal patchwork. Strips of denim cut on the bias turn into interesting texture trim after laundering. On this blouse, I sewed the strips to the edges of the collar, front, and sleeves for a fast way to add unique detail. This is a great technique, not only because it looks good, but it's so fast. And Mary, your recommendation is to start with two inch wide strips of denim cut on the bias. We have our sample here and we've got the bias arrow marked. I like to experiment with different colors and shades of denim. And as it is right here, Nancy, it doesn't look very impressive, but we need to treat this to the washer and the dryer. I have here some of my experiments in this mesh bag. And I use a mesh bag for the laundering and drying to kind of hold all the extra little threads in. And so when they emerge from the bag, they're a lot more interesting mm -hmm. than this first piece was. But we need to do some cutting. It's two inches wide now, but now we have double the amount of trim just by cutting down the center, making it a little narrower. The interesting part about working with denim is that you could work with different colors. Mary chose to accent the trim on this shirt with a medium blue, whereas the fabric here was a light blue, and simply place the trim on the underside, and you can see the raw edge, and then from the top side did some top stitching to add the trim. It's two rows of top stitching and then as the last detail on the sleeve, Nancy, I chose to change the buttons for something more interesting to look at than the shirt, what the shirt came with. So this shirt has it on the collar, the front edge, the cuff. It's really a nice little extra touch. Once you know how to do the trim, we can also add some fringe using your same technique. We're going to use the laundry again, but this time for a different effect that we'll create. This is more dramatic, and rather than a two-inch strip, you're going to use a three-inch strip of fabric. It's a little wider this time, so we have more to work with. And here's our sample strip, and our bias line is marked again. And sometimes we're going to need a longer strip than we have fabric, so mm -hmm. we can piece this together. Uh, here I have pieced some strips, and at the top, I have, in the top one inch, I have done some reinforced stitching and then sewed all the way to the bottom. And then to work this out, I'll cut open the, cut right by the edge of the seam allowance, cutting off the seam, and then I'll clip it over to the side so we have now an opening in our strip of fringe. And at this point, Nancy, is where we're going to start to cut one half inch uh, strips to make our fringe. I have experimented with different widths, mm -hmm. narrower than this, and I find that they kind of fall apart in the laundry, so I don't advise it. So then using your same laundering technique with a launder bag, wash and dry the fringe. And look at this interesting trim detail. It's kind of curly and interesting. Could be ironed flatter if you like that look better. It could be inserted into a seam or as Mary did in the back yoke, simply placed it on the top yoke seam 
then did some trimming by placing a purchase trim on top, top stitching. A fun way to add embellishment to denim. This vest features a chenille collar. Stack layers of denim and chambray, sew them together, and then slash them apart between the seam lines to create chenille fabric. The amazing part happens when the slash fabric goes through a cycle in the washer and dryer, and the fabric edges ravel and ruffle, creating great texture. Mary's added this collar to a vest, a purchase vest. The collar is flat, Mary. It's not a functional collar. That's right. It just looks very interesting because of the texture of the cut denim. You started with a blank vest or a vest that is not embellished. That's right, a plain neckline. And then I've uh, designed a collar, and this is part of the reference material for today's show. Mm -hmm. And it fits uh, just at the neckline, it's very simple. And we have an arrow drawn on the collar to indicate how the lines of the chenille will run. You're going to work with three layers of fabric, not recycled denim, but actual denim. Fat quarters, about 22 by 18 sizes of denim, work really well. And Mary, you've chosen a dark fabric for the top, a denim for the top layer. And in the second layer is a lighter chambray, and the bottom layer also is that same chambray. But the bottom layer, I always like to cut a little larger, and we'll see why this works better as we're doing our slashing a little later. So after stacking, then you're going to do some marking on the fabric. I've marked the center line, and then I've marked the bias line also on each side of the center because each collar section will be cut from this fabric. Remember the bias is a 45 degree angle. So we're going to line up the lines here on with our line marker, and they're equally spaced half an inch apart, and then with a the chalk marker we can add the rest of our lines to line uh, draw lines on the entire piece of fabric. And then on our next sample, we can show you how we've done that, and we've begun the stitching that makes this such a unique project. You've used contrasting thread, which do the thread that would match the denim fabric, and just stitch, straight stitch, following the lines that you marked. Very easy sewing, Nancy. And then we take out the slash cutter and cut between the stitching lines and make this uh, an open fabric in many ways. Mm -hmm. Now you can hang on to the, that base fabric because it is... Yes, I'm tugging kind of a little bit as I'm cutting here. And so here we uh, make the marks. I did start each line with a little snip of my scissors that made it easier for my cutter to get in here and, and slash through. So at this point now, it's, it looks okay, but mm -hmm. again we're going to get out our mesh bag because this process again needs to be laundered. And so from the mesh bag, we're going to pull out some of my experiments with chenille denim. And I like to work with different shades, and I experimented, and I, some I sewed three quarters of an inch apart, but I really found I preferred the half inch as we yes. did on our collar. But this is fun to experiment with. So then after stitching all the layers, washing in that, then of course you'd use your pattern placing the pattern, this is just a sample, keep in mind, but placing it so that the grain line matches the slash mark, cut it out, and on the garment itself, you didn't do a lot of fancy stitching. No, I, the first seam is to secure the collar to the wrong side and stitch on the edge, and then flip it over to the right side of the vest, and then just zigzag with clear thread all the way around to secure it to the garment. So this is a raw edge. This is truly fast way of adding this garment, this collar to the garment, but really a great way. So by stacking layers, doing some sewing and cutting, and then after washing and drying, it makes a great accent on denim. Next you're going to see a trio of three denim shirts, all embellished differently to inspire you. Mary, we're going to start with an argyle design. These diamonds, Nancy, were cut from different pairs of blue jeans. All the shadings are different and we have seam lines. You recommend working with, as I have here, a sample of a recycled blue jean fabric and then cutting a window. I cut the window from paper so I can move it around and determine where I want to cut the design. And I do try to avoid placing that heavy mm -hmm. seam at the corners so that there's not a lot of bulk. It's really fun what you can get in an applique design. Then we have a second shirt which features an applique design which was inspired by an old towel I found at an antique store. And I like the cute little design and I decided to place it on this shirt. And this is different from traditional yes. because normally we'd use this design on a plain front shirt. And then I changed the buttons too. This last design features an embellishment carried through from the buttons. 
I bought the buttons, they were so interesting, and then I chose to mirror them in the appliques which are inspired by the colors and the shapes of the buttons. You stripe fabric plus two prints and some simple zigzag stitching. That's right. For another interesting accent on denim, watch as Nancy Couch's decorative trim and ribbon. Select an assortment of yarns, ribbon, or cord for a novel accent on denim. The technique is called couching, which means to zigzag, stitch, or triple zigzag stitch to anchor the trims. The creating couldn't be easier. One of the great parts about working with this technique is choosing the type of trim you'd like to work with. There are many assortments and selections that you can choose. I've work, I'm working with a palette that's a little bit lighter in color, more pastel in color than the sample that we showed you that Mary created. Choose five or six lengths of cord, ribbon, or thread. Cut them into one in, to one and a half yard lengths, and then do some pressing. As you can see, when it comes off the cord or the card, it's wrinkled. Vary the length slightly, and then find the approximate center. At the center, place a scrap of fabric underneath the cords, which I have a little blue scrap right here, and zigzag the ribbons and trims to that fabric. With an extra, let's say, 10 to 12 inches of ribbon, wrap around the cords to center them or to give it a focal point at that center. And you can kind of pin and position and wrap, oh, four to five times around the center. I've just pinned a couple of times for you to see. This accent, this particular center point, is placed at the shoulder area of the vest, or I'm making a jacket. I'm going to place it on this denim jacket. You may want to try on the shirt or sew the shoulder seams of your garment together to make sure you have it positioned right. Then with clear thread, I have zigzagged or straight stitched this center section down. In the center you're using, or in the, excuse me, the needle, you're using the clear thread with a metafill needle, and on the bobbin, a thread that matches the fabric. Notice the markings on the fabric. With chalk, I've simply drawn lines where I'd like the streamers to flow out of this design. We could cover these designs with the trim. The stitching is a zigzag stitch, a wide zigzag stitch, or as I mentioned earlier, a multiple step zigzag. And we're simply going to randomly place these cords into position. I have a stabilizer pinned underneath my fabric. And let me get the right cords in the right spaces here. I'll work with this dyed rickrack. And I'm simply going to zigzag over the cord, not stitching it down the center. It doesn't have to be perfect stitching. That's the great part about this. And just follow your lines. This is great fun because you certainly don't have to follow those lines. The chalk will brush right away. After you've stitched all of them down, as I said, you can use the three-step zigzag, the single stitch, or in this instance, I just used a wide zigzag. You can see how quickly that is positioned into place. Now, when working with the ends of the cord, I'd like to show you how we dealt with this on the finished vest. You can tie a little knot at the end. You could turn under the edges and zigzag whatever you'd like to do. It's just you'd like to secure those slightly. Here's a knot. We've turned under the edges, edges. Notice how this design wraps around the back. And I'd like to show you how Mary designed the back, just randomly placing the trim and ribbon. So for a quick accent that adds a lot of highlight, couch over ribbon, cords, and trim. In this first program of Denim and Chambray with Style, Mary and I detailed a variety of techniques of adding extra accents to denim. You can use the same techniques we showed you on different garments in different ways. For example, the couching technique was also applied to this shirt. It had pin tucks in it already. Mary simply placed the ribbon between the tucks or the cord or whatever you would like and then did that same couching te technique. Mary and I will have more ideas on denim in our second program. Please stay tuned. Here's a hint from Oxford House, publisher of Fitting Finesse. Great fit starts with good measurements. To find your waist measurement, bend to the side. The deepest resulting wrinkle is the position for your waist. Stand straight again and measure around your waist, keeping the tape measure parallel to the floor. Place a thumb or finger under the tape measure to keep the measurement from being taken too tightly and measure to the closest half of an inch. You'll find additional advice for accurately taking body measurements and alterations within fitting finesse. 
Here's a hint from Nancy's notions. You can use your catalog as a mini sewing reference. You may have noticed that throughout the catalog we include hints and tips for using products. For ease in locating notions, tab the various sections, for example, needles, interfacings, fusibles, and feet, using post-it notes or divider tabs. Then when you're watching Sewing with Nancy or Sewing at Home, you have a question about how to use a notion, then you can quickly look it up. It's time for Creative Sewing. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy. We value denim and chambray garments for their year-round comfort and versatility. Most of us wouldn't be without them. As creative people, we can add distinctive touches that add style. Mir Malari, designer, author, and frequent guest on my show, is here to share her clever accents that can easily be added to purchased or custom-made denim. Welcome, Mary. Nancy, it's always fun to be a guest on your show. Today's projects, I think beginners or experienced sewers alike will enjoy. Let's start by featuring a foundation piece jacket front. I chose a collection of cotton prints and <coughs> sewed them to tear away foundation, which became the jacket trim. The sewing is simple and enjoyable. Discover the joy of adding accents to denim next on Sewing with Nancy. This next stylized change on Mary's denim jacket is a combination of quilting and sewing techniques. And Mary, you explained earlier it was a foundation piece panel that you placed on the front. The jacket had some nice lines on the side that I was able to follow and I chose a variety of prints and made the jacket front more interesting, I think. Yeah, very much so. We have another jacket underneath that we can show you the technique and the process of adding a quilted pattern panel or a paper piece panel. As you can see, this same type of shirt has a princess style seam that gives you a perfect palette for this quilting area. The lines are easy to follow. And we start by making a pattern again of, of the area that we're going to trim. Now you can see that I've traced this exactly, but later in cutting fabric for it, we're going to be adding a half an inch seam allowance on all of the edges so we can turn under fabric. We mentioned this was a foundation piece technique, and you will find available at fabric stores, catalogs, foundation piecing that is printed on tearaway stabilizer. This can be torn away after you've sewn it. So it's just a stabilizer with printing on it, kind of like paint by number. We used to, as kids, paint scenes. It has what markings for all the different pattern or fabric pieces you'll put into place. And Mary, you've chosen five or six colors of fabrics. The colors that go together, you could choose tone on tone shades or, or a little contrast as we have here. And we've cut two pieces for, for our, to begin our project. Mm -hmm. And number one obviously goes here. And I would start by pinning this piece in place so that it will stay because then we're going to pin piece number two over the edge. We'll, we'll study where the seam uh, joins and we're going to overlap that. And we would probably pin this also in place. You know, what's kind of interesting to point out before we do the sewing is that this piece is cut larger than the shape, but it doesn't have to be exact. It can be a, a piece of any shape because we will be trimming uh, and covering the edges af after. So a great project for scraps, and as you said, you lay the second piece, make sure it fits over that section, number two section, but then just pin the edges. And now we'll flip to the stitching side. It's a very simple seam. We have a line that we can easily follow to attach piece number one and piece number two. And here you can see that at, we have a close-up of the machine stitching along that line, just a simple straight stitch. And it doesn't have to be accurate. You can even overshoot your line if you want to. That's right, because your next seams will cover that up. Now in this particular sample we have here, this was not sewn, so I'm just going to pin it. But we would then simply finger press this to cover the line along that stitching line. It's a nice and clean finish, and we're ready then for piece number three. We have two other samples made for you where we have added several other pieces as we've, as we've gone around this foundation piecing and just builds. Most of these start from the center. That's right. We also found that it, when in comparing our pattern piece yes. to the foundation, we needed a little extra room at the top and bottom. So our next sample shows this additional fabric that we've added to build this piece a little longer. I think this is really attractive when it is all yes. together. 
So then you would place your pattern piece over this quilted or patchwork section, adding a half inch seam allowance as you go along. I like a half an inch, Nancy, because that gives you some leeway for mm -hmm. uh, turning edges under in case you haven't been quite so careful when you've made your pattern. Um, we'll refer back to our finished jacket, but Mary, you simply fold it under those seam allowances, pin the panel to right over the ready-made shirt or jacket, and then did some straight stitching with clear thread. Very easy stitching, and clear thread blends so well into almost every color. When we were going over this technique, I was concerned about the buttonholes because you're covering the buttonhole area. Right. <laughs> And the, really, you've taken the, all the work out of it. Well, this is so easy, Nancy. I stitch over the buttonhole on from the back side. I use a zigzag stitch. I try to match my thread color. And then I cut it open. Mm -hmm. And so I have a buttonhole again without even using my buttonhole foot. So just zigzagging following the original buttonhole stitching. Since you had to take off all your buttons to put the panel in, you then follow the patchwork theme through. Yes, I used all different buttons for my jacket. Why not? It's fun. So this is a perfect way to add some style to a denim jacket. If you worry about bad results from rubber stamping directly on a garment, try the method used on this denim apron. Stamp designs on pieces of fabric and then applique the stamped fabrics to clothing or accessories. I really enjoy this technique because it combines arts, the art of rubber stamping plus the art of sewing. And Mary has done it so well. Mary, on this butcher block style apron, you have appliques with rubber stamps and a little couching, stitching over yarn. It's really quite an interesting mix. The other thing I'd like to point out, Nancy, is that I've placed one of the stamped fabrics over the seam. Now that would be very difficult to do if you were stamping directly on the garment. You have some fabric set up. Yes, and here's the stamp that that I used to uh, make the coffee mm -hmm. beans on the apron. But And I like this because it has solid images. And I have another rubber stamp here that I'll show today, it's a curly cue. And this too has a solid back. And so what I'll do is, and you can use, some people use uh, rubber stamp pads. I'm going to apply paint directly to the uh, rubber on the back and paint it on like this and then we'll press it on fabric. I like to use a fabric that has some texture and interest to it. And this is not the best surface since it's tilted, but in at home I like my bathroom uh, counter space because that, that gives me the place to give a lot of pressure to this design. So then after pressing on it firmly, I lift it up and I have an image on my fabric. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we have to let this dry before we can do anything to it, but after the fabric's dried, we can um, uh, have some fun making appliques. While we're pointing out these designs, I also want you at home to look at the various fabric backgrounds. This was a very nubby muslin, or it has a lot of flex in it with some fish designs. Wait till you see what this translates to on a jumper in a few minutes. This ginkgo leaf plus some curly cues is fun. You'll see this design also used. Here's another fabric that Mary used with her coffee cup design. This had a little pin dot to it, and even on the wrong side of the fabric. So, so many of our artists we have on our show use right and wrong sides of fabric. Here again is another way to do that. I like to just accumulate a bunch of samples so then later I can make something from my rubber stamping experiments. There, there's our curly cue again, and I use, also used a pen, a pen, permanent pen for pin stitch markings to give stitching detail. You saw the rubber stamp design on the apron, but here you can see the fish design Mary has applied on the front of a jumper and framed the design with different fabrics. She even surged the edges and then top stitched into place. I added the buttons for another little detail, and this is so fun and, and so easy, too. Uh, to decorate a garment. What I like about this is that there are guidelines but no rules. That's right, you make them up as you go. This tote bag has pockets, pockets of rubber stamped fabric. I, each pocket has a design of its own. I stitched it on to trim the pockets and in the center the large pocket has a decorative stitching mm -hmm. around the edges of the design area. Along with rayon thread, so you have many different elements combined. So you can see if you're interested in rubber stamping, interested in fabric, they're two perfect things to combine. Whether they're from your personal collection of old linens or from a yard sale or antique shop, 
Vintage linens like handkerchiefs, dinner napkins, and tablecloths make great additions to new clothing. Here a few old handkerchiefs create unusual edge trim on a jumper. This jumper really is a showcase of vintage handkerchiefs. Many people have collections, Nancy, and it's fun to use them to trim the front of a garment like this jumper or any garment with a plain front edge. You have brought along some of your old handkerchiefs. The, this was a, a little assortment and it's fun to cut off the corners and use them for a garment. And then the one on the bottom is actually a dinner napkin and we were talking about how mm -hmm. this might be a common problem for many people. When I saw the sample the other day I said I have some like this but they have a hole in it. From, they were from my grandmother and just like this one from being folded at those corners for so many years. You can't use them, but for this instance, you certainly can. It provides four nice corners for mm -hmm. this project. We have a vest today that we can trim with the same technique. I have just two handkerchief points pinned or cut here to uh, trim the front edge, and I'm going to place it underneath. Now, I would like to suggest, Nancy, that th this be planned out before any sewing be done, but I would uh, plan this and pin it here on, on mm -hmm. the front of the vest. And then I'd continue with uh, adding another one. And I'd build the neckline trim and, and just keep changing it until I liked what I've laid out. And the best thing about this, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. No, no, it can be uneven and different shapes of, of the corners of, of the uh, handkerchiefs. Now those corners are cut on the bias, so it's really not going to ravel that much. But Mary has added a nice finish to the neckline to cover up the corners or the cut edges of the corner of the handkerchiefs. I cut bias strips because there's plenty of fabric in the middle of the handkerchief and I cut the strips from that and I wrapped mm -hmm. the edges over the edges of the handkerchiefs. And keep in mind when th something's on the bias it curves and shapes and that's what Mary needed through this neckline area. To make it look neater and sure. more professional. Not only can you use handkerchiefs but we can also work with table linens and we have a great jumper or dress where you use the concept of a trench flap, but this certainly is not like a raincoat flap. This is actually the corner of a tablecloth I found at an antique store with big stains in the middle, but the corners were perfect, so I sewed it to the dress, and the, on the other side is a dresser scarf corner, complete with crocheted edging and embroidery, and again, it was a nice way to use that piece. Let's flip to the wrong side, or the back, I should say, because look at this dresser scarf. The, the corner of it, or the end of it, was just mm -hmm. perfect for the back yoke <laughs> of, of my dress. And you just overlaid that on top of the denim, or chambray dress, and it looks great. Uh, another quick look at, a, at an option. We have here an old and new idea combined. The frame of the design is a Dresden plate circle, again I found at an antique store, and the center is a n brand new made computerized design that's just just out because it used a kind of a modeled fabric. It really blended well. We have a combination of traditional and modern contemporary design. Here are three more inspirations of working with denim featuring creative appliques. Our first shirt, Nancy, has Japanese fans and the first one has another piece of an old handkerchief and then Japanese style fabric and then a piece of an old kimono. And to build the fans we use fusible bias tape. After fusing it on you simply straight stitched around the very edges. Quick and easy. You know sometimes blue fabric, the denim, really makes a great background and I think that's why we like it so much. This man's shirt has a little touch of embellishment over the pocket area. I chose different colors and shades of denim fabrics and I combined it with top stitching and as we've talked about we've covered perhaps a logo that we didn't want showing on our mm -hmm. shirt anymore and it adds just a little touch of style to a man's shirt. And our last inspiration has to work with some nature scenes. I chose four designs and I also use a suede-like fabric to build them from and I use clear thread and a small zigzag to attach them to the shirt. Now in the book that accompanies this series you'll give the designs and then also how to work with the zigzagging. Just a clear thread as you say, a little bit of stitching. You don't need it because a lot because it doesn't ravel. That's right. And then we have decorative stitching as well. And now for another creative applique idea, watch as Nancy decorates a denim bib jumper. Brighten up a bib front jumper with a sunflower applique. Use fabrics with texture like felt, 
corduroy fleece or other thick fabrics for extra dimension. They're perfect choices for denim accents. So often if you're working with a purchased denim garment, you'll find you'll have to work around or with the pockets or accents on a bib front. In this example, we have two pockets plus a rivet. I'm going to avoid the rivet, but if you happen to have a double one, you would simply cut around very close to the fabric, removing the rivet. We're going to be working with textured fabric, like polar fleece or Eskimo fleece and felt. These, these are basically the fleece types of fabrics. And the designs that you'll find in the book that accompanies this series can be traced onto the paper backing of a fusible stabilizer. And I have the design components drawn on this area. Then roughly cut these out and press to the wrong side of your accent fabric, your applique fabric. Now keep in mind that you have to work with the wrong side of the fabric, put this on the wrong side and press. Now even though that this is a nap fabric, you don't have to worry about it at this time for pressing because you're pressing on the wrong side. Then after doing the cutting, trimming around the edges, you can peel away, and here's the center of the sunflower, peel away the paper backing. Now the beauty of using this type of stabilizer with a sticky back is that you can reposition it if you'd like, but most importantly, you don't have to press it from the top side so that you're not going to flatten the nap of the fleece. I have all of the samples cut out, and I'm just going to quickly position these for you, and then I'll hold these up so that you can look at them. Just position them kind of asymmetrically on the front of this bib. Now another reason why we like to use appliques with depth and texture is that as you're going over the ridges of the pocket, it's going to, the fabric will absorb all the extra bulk and you will not see imprints on this applique. Asymmetrical things I really like and this certainly it works out well for avoiding a lot of the pocket details. Now, in working with the stitching, I have my machine set up with working with a monofilament thread, a clear thread, as well as a monofilament needle, metafil needle, and then also we're just going to use a narrow zigzag, a slight zigzag stitch. You don't have to place a heavy satin stitch. Just check the width, and we'll ju you'll just see I'm just going to be using a narrow width and a relatively long length, not at all like you'd normally do with a satin stitch. And as I'm going over all these pocket ears, it really doesn't matter at all. It blends and slides over very easily. With the bulk of all this denim, it does take a little bit of time to na navigate around these edges, but it's really quite a fast application. For beginners, appliquing with fleece is great because the fabric absorbs the stitches, and if you stitched a little uneven, no one would be the wiser. So you'd keep stitching around all of the outer edges. As you can see, the applique that I'm working with is all the fleece products, like polar fleece or Eskimo fleece. But as we look again at Mary's finished sample, she has a variety of fabrics. The suede and the felt are used in the sunflower, as well as some fleece in the stem and the flowers. What a fun accent to work on denim. I'd like to do a quick recap of working with textured appliques or appliques that have naps. For example, on this sunflower with the working with polar fleece or Eskimo fleece, we applied the appliques into place with applies. When you peel back the paper, we have the sticky back side to position. If you didn't have this, you could possibly work with, or another alternative would be work with fabric spray ad adhesive. I've sprayed it on the wrong side, and it easily sticks to the fabric without using pressing. Give these a try. Here's a hint from Ginger. To keep your scissors and shears in top condition, carefully wipe the inside blade surfaces frequently with a soft cloth. Wiping blades is especially important when working with polyester and other synthetic fabrics because the accumulated lint has an abrasive effect on the cutting edges. Periodically, lightly oil the screw head and between the blades in the pivot area. Wipe off excess oil to avoid oil buildup, which can cause fabric stains. Here's a hint from Madeira. When adding thread accents to your sewing projects, choose between two convenient sizes of Madeira Rayon embroidery thread. 
the 220-yard Smart Spool, and the 1,100-yard Super Spool. Select Madeira's Smart Spool for accent colors. When buying frequently used thread colors, choose the Super Size Spool. Each Super Spool holds as much thread as five of the Smart Spools. Regardless of the spool size, you'll enjoy the luster and quality of Madeira Rayon Embroidery Thread. I'm glad that you could join me. I'm Nancy Zeman. This program is the third lesson on adding accents to fabrics that many of us love to wear, denim and chambray. For those of us who enjoy sewing and quilting, these are palettes perfect for embellishing. Mary Malari, whose books and designs are known nationally, has turned her creative thoughts to denim and chambray and added even more style. Mary, it's been a pleasure having you with us during this series. Nancy, thanks for inviting me to be here. I'd like today to share some ideas for making old denim better. I salvaged an old denim shirt from my closet and removed the sleeves and collar. By adding a collection of doilies and a little sewing, I turned it into a unique lace-covered vest. Discover the joy of sewing denim next on Sewing with Nancy. The beauty of denim is that it can be combined with practically any type of fabric, and Mary, your doily covered denim shirt, now a vest, really is proof to that. That's right. It was a few years ago that no one would have put these two together. It's very charming. Here you have a shirt that's now ready to be made into a vest. We, the first thing we need to do, Nancy, even before we cut off the collar and collar stand, is to do some stay stitching around the neckline so that we secure the neck so it doesn't get stretched out of shape. So just a straight stitch with a short stitch length around the neckline and then you can just cut off the collar. We've also cut off the sleeves and I got one pocket flap cut off and also the side seams of the shirt are cut open so uh, and the buttons have been removed from the from the front of the shirt. You did find Mary that the bulk of the pocket really did not inhibit the lace and the design of the vest. No that's right just the pocket flap is what I removed. So we really just have a shell a front and a back of this shirt. Now we need to arrange it so we can cover it with doilies. Mm -hmm. This, is, this takes a little bit of space, Nancy, to yes. arrange, maybe on the floor or a special cutting table. And the first place I locate a doily is over the neckline. And I like to add it a little off-center so that it's a little more interesting. And this is the first one that we place. And uh, you could cut off the excess and use that in other mm -hmm. areas on the vest. So now we can continue to lay out some other doilies that we have either from our collection at home or ones that we buy and just uh, trim the front of this vest. It's interesting how so many different threads of doilies, even we have a Battenberg lace doily here, they all work together really fine. Yeah, they, uh, it, every vest turns out to be very different and interesting in its own way. So we have done a, just a partial overlapping of the doilies onto the denim, and now we're going to secure this into place. I like to use the fusible spray to hold the doilies in place. After I've placed them, I plant it first, mm -hmm. and then I would spray underneath to hold the doilies down temporarily. And then the next item that we add over the top is tulle. And we have <laughs> a piece of bright blue, well, it might seem to be bright blue tulle, and we place this over the entire vest uh, front and back. So we're put, we'll straighten this out. And this also we would hold on with some spray just to keep it in place. That and would I'll go just under. Tuck it underneath, a little fabric spray, a little bit goes a long way. We're not doing it permanently right now, but just to show you how it really sticks together quite well. And then to, for a little extra insurance, I would like to add some pins to this because mm -hmm. they hold the pieces in place on the vest so that we can take it off our table or work surface and then take it to the sewing machine. This we, is going to be sewn together very easily, That's right. by the way. We're going to uh, mark some lines first, and they will be our guides for stitching. We, have, uh, we need to mark two perpendicular lines, and I like to mark from the back to the front, and I'm going to use a chalk marker, which I'm, I'm going to make sure that I can see this line. It's very important, so it might be kind of dark on here, but I, I want to guarantee that it will be visible. 
and maybe I'll have to use a different color chalk marker in some places. And then there will be another line going in this direction that will mark as a, a cross line mark, and that will continue from the back to the front and on down. Now with a straight stitch at your sewing machine, simply sew along these two lines. That's right. Very simple straight mm -hmm. sewing. Right through all the layers. The, the veiling, the denim, the doilies. This small sample shows that it has been stitched, but Mary, you really only marked one line, but yet as we look on the reverse side, we have a gridded surface. Just like a quilted surface. And so we're going to do all of this on the front and the back, and then we're going to uh, follow that up also with a quilting bar. Here at the machine you can see that I ha am aligning that first row of stitching with the quilting bar and then all my subsequent rows will be equally spaced. It's a very easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. And following all the quilting stitching, we're going to sew around the entire edge of the vest to secure everything. We're going to trim away the extra tool and then the last step will be to wrap the vest edges with lace. Very quick. We'll refer back to our finished vest and you can see that since lace has a finished edge, it doesn't ravel, it's simply been wrapped around the very edge and top stitched. Really quite clever and a very great way of finishing it. And I think we'd like to show how we use the sleeves from our vest, Nancy. This was a little project that turned up. I made these for my nephew's teddy bear. The sleeves of the <laughs> shirt turned into blue jeans and for can, the teddy bear. And you can see the cuffs, and all Mary had to do was sew the two sleeves together and add an elastic at the waistline. So you are recycling, very creative at recycling. The instructions are in the resource material for today's program. So whether you have denim or you have chambray shirt, plus doilies, you can add great style to your wardrobe. Here's a movable embellishment for denim and chambray garments. Make your own version of this slip-over stole to showcase unique fabrics, machine stitching, applique, or other trimming ideas. We think the possibilities for this project are endless. We have two different slip-over stole ideas to show you, and the one that you just saw is what you'll get a close-up right now. And Mary, you've tried some interesting designs on this chambray slip-over stole. This is a printed fabric, and over the top I've laid some pieces of suede-like fabric, mm -hmm. and I've done some freehand stitching, and so there's a little bit of dimension here on this side of the stole. And I made this one reversible. So we'll show the other side at this time, and here we feature some beading accents and some other stitching as well. This is really very fun because you can make it reversible front to back or even you could use the inside as the right side as well. You could have four different ways that mm -hmm. you wear this stole. Now we have another design to show you. This is our project for today. It's perhaps a little plainer in some ways, but it features some different uh, ideas for you. The, the pattern for this stole is featured in the resource materials for the program, and this is the basic shape. Mm -hmm. And on the next pattern, I've just drawn some dividing lines, and this is just a, a suggestion, Nancy, because you could divide this many, many ways. Mary, you always recommend doing things in odd numbers. That's right, and off-center. Mm -hmm. And you've added fourth of an inch seam allowances to the adjoining seams. We're going to want to sew these pieces together mm -hmm. so that they fit and that we haven't taken up uh, too much fabric. I'll show you the pieces that we're going to work with today. I'll lay these out. The colors can, are certainly of your choice. Mm -hmm. Any kinds of fabric work well. And so we're going to stitch these pieces together again with quarter inch seam allowances. And at this point, though, may, we may want to add some prairie points to our uh, stole front. And mm -hmm. as I've done on the, the vest that we showed earlier, I have three. Now, we build these with three-inch squares of fabric. And here I have a sample three-inch square, and I'm simply going to fold it in half, meeting the edges. So that's a three-inch square. And then meeting the centers, the ends to the center, I should say. You see, you've seen these many places. Right. They're, it's a quilting technique, actually. And we create a triangle. 
And then, as we see on the, the completed stole, I've inserted three of these into the seam lines. Just a, an option, but we're going to save one also for our buttonhole area and our closure for our stole. So right now, before sewing the seams, you've added some prairie point interest. And I'll show you, just this has been sewn together. And we've also sewn together the shoulder seam, just one shoulder seam, attaching the front to the back. The other detail on the open shoulder edge is another of our prairie points, which we've placed and stitched on. And now, just to show how this will look when we complete the stole, there's an opening in our prairie point, and there is where we will stitch a, a buttonhole through the opening. That's very clever. Now you're going to meet right sides together, or the front to the back, and we'll flip that around. Mary, you just made this sample solid. Someday we'll finish all these samples, That's and we'll right. have many stoles to wear. That's what's so great about this, to be able to wear these on so many different kinds of garments that mm -hmm. are plain. Mm -hmm. So you sew around the edges, leave about a four inch opening along one edge, turn it right side out, and here we'll re refer back to one of our other stoles that Mary already completed. And the buttonhole was simply placed or sewn between the folds, and I'll unbutton this so that you can see how easily that works. And what a clever closure, as well as an interesting addition that you could create on your denim or chambray shirt. Now it's time for some more inspiration using some of the techniques we've learned with different designs. And Mary, this cute little jumper top has very interesting appliques. These are just simple squares with edges turned back and blanket stitched. And there are two very interesting squares, one in the top row and one in the bottom row, featuring a technique we featured in our first section on chenille denim. So you've used a lot of your scraps, and I like your button application. That adds some texture and dimension to this simple design. Next we have a dress, Nancy, that features trim at the top. It's a, a design that isn't symmetrical. The tendency mm -hmm. for many people is to make the design the same on both sides, and I like to make it different. This has a combination of bias trim, some yo-yo fabrics that you've made, some synthetic suede appliques. I like it. The bias is fused on, and so then it's easy to top stitch over. We have to show the skirt area because right. this works well on this denim dress, but it could be definitely on any other type of garment you'd like to applique. You'll recognize the jeans pocket from someone's old blue jeans, and then the handle for the basket <laughs> is the belt loops of the blue jeans. We add the flowers and the stems, and we make a flower basket on our dress. It's really cute. For a more subtle tone-on-tone -tone look, you've used some thread from uh, that matches the top stitching in the seam area, and a quilting stencil. That's right, plastic stencils or whatever stencils you have can be used as outlines for designs. I used a top stitching needle and some heavier thread or a double strand of thread to create this design on the dress. For another interesting way to trim a denim garment, watch as Nancy demonstrates creative cut work. Achieve the look of weaving by stitching a second fabric to the wrong side of a denim garment and then cutting away sections of the denim to reveal the accent fabric. Mary chose a dark denim jumper and an interesting blue shaded dish towel for an accent fabric. What a clever combination. Rarely do I ever think of using linens as accents in fabric, but in this instance, it worked out so well. The towel that Mary chose, and I have some of the leftover pieces of it, had an interesting design and weave. And you can see portions of it that were re removed by after doing the stitching and cutting. It really is a fun look. This is a very contemporary look on the top of the jumper. I'm going to show you something a little bit more traditional, yet the same technique. As we mentioned, you can choose dish towels or linens, but of course fabric. Let me just show you some combinations that would work well with many shades of denim. We have other two di another dish towel, another napkin. The subtle design works out well. Or, of course, you could work with fabric. I'm going to be using a smaller sample rather than a full denim jumper right now. But if this is the shape of the yoke where I'd like the cut work to appear, cut the fabric a little bit larger than your area that you're going to expose. Turn under the seam allowances and top stitch or you could zigzag or you could surge. The choice is yours, but you need to clean finish the edge. If you're doing this cut work, 
on a garment that you're creating, you can simply, of course, include these seam allowances along with the other seam allowances of the garment. So just use your common sense in putting this together. I'm going to place the yoke area that's going to be the accent piece would be placed on your tabletop, then place your garment on top. And I'm just using samples right now to show this to you. Pin and position into place and then mark a gridded system. You have two types of gridded systems to work with and I'm going to do a kind of a free form one right now just making some angular marks. Not straight as you can see and then cross hatch them somewhat on the diagonal. Quite wavy lines. We could either do this stitching in a two-step or a one-step, and I'm going to show it to you in a two-step. The sample was one, so you can make the choice. First row, working with a narrow zigzag with a relatively long stitch, then doing the trimming and then st satin stitching on top or just plain doing a satin stitch and letting the edges fray a touch. You can do the stitching, as I mentioned, on these wavy lines, or if you wanted to be more specific, make the grid system in a window pane effect or diamond effect, as I have here. I've started to do the stitching just with a narrow width of a zigzag and a relatively long stitch length, just to hold the two layers together, stitching, doing the stitching. And I'll just do one row stitching to show you how this works. So I have a stitch width of about two, a stitch length of one, and just stitch. A lot of straight stitching is all you need right now. And sew the two layers together. And just to speed this up, I'm going to lengthen the stitch just a little bit. Now after doing all the grid stitching, sewing along all your lines, then simply do some marking which areas that you would like cut away. To do the cutting or before doing the cutting, do some marking. I'm going to start with this row. Mark every other block or opening. These areas would be where I would do the cutting. The other row, the alternate row, the second row would have the alternate blocks removed. Please take time to do this marking before cutting because, as you might guess, you might miss an area if you hadn't done this or cut too close together. To do the cutting, now separate the fabrics. I'm pulling the backing fabric away and then clipping. With your applique scissors, trim very close to the stitching line. And trim and trim. I got to get it's a little bit hard to get started at first so that you do not clip too much of the fabric. And keep working around. Take your time when doing this. The applique scissors work so well because you place the bill of the fabric next to the, the, the bill of the scissors, I should say, next to the fabric and it prevents cutting of the underneath layer and you can get very, very close. Now the second row of stitching would be done with machine embroidery thread and a machine embroidery needle and a satin stitch around the edges. As we refer back to our finished garment, you can see that sometimes the denim may fray after doing the trimming. Again, this is the more contemporary approach, but yet you have an interesting cutwork design. I hope that yours is inspired as I am to work with denim and chambray to add additional style. Mary, it's been a pleasure having you once again on Sewing with Nancy. This is our seventh series together. It's, as always, it's been fun, Nancy, to join you and share my ideas. Keep in mind that every technique that we've shared with you, plus many more, is in Mary's newest book, Denim and Chambray with Style. All the step-by-steps and patterns, so we'll have a perfect reference guide. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Sewing with Nancy has been made possible by grants from the following companies. Fop, simply the best European line of sewing machines. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears. Oxmoor House, publishers of sewing, quilting, and craft books. Madeira Threads, designed for home and professional embroiderers everywhere. 
and Nancy's Notion Sewing Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and notions. Thank you.